Hey guys, welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and we're going, we'll be going through Chapter 8, Solution Chemistry. How sweet is your coffee? Better not be sweet at all. Black's the only way to drink coffee, just my opinion. Hot and black, no sweetener required. None of that cream stuff either. Come on now. All right, first things first. A cup of coffee with sugar represents a type of solution known as a homogeneous solution which we've already talked about before, homogeneous simply means uh, uniform throughout. And in chemistry, we call that a solution. Now, a solution is made up of a solute and a solvent. All solutions are. Now, the solute is in the solution in the least amount. And you can have more than one. In fact, coffee is probably a mixture of many different solutes. First of all, if you put sugar in it, there's the sugar. That's a solute. But also all the molecules that make up the coffee flavor and aroma and the color, those are all solutes because they're all dissolved in a solvent, and that solvent would be water. Water is the solvent for coffee. Everybody knows that. Okay? So all solutions have a solute and a solvent. Sound good? So far, so good. Not a problem. All solutions have a solute the least amount, lower amount materials, and they all have a solvent, the one that's in there in the higher amount. Now, although coffee is dark, it is still transparent. That's important. Solutions are, uh, well, I should say aqueous solutions, liquid solutions, and gaseous solutions are always transparent. Okay? Solid solutions, like <laughs> they're not. They're not transparent at all. You can't see through solids. But uh, liquid and gaseous solutions are always transparent. You can see right through them. They may have color, though. They may have color. That's okay. But they will be transparent. For example, Kool-Aid is a great example of a solute, uh, solution. Pardon me. Kool-Aid. Water, sugar, and the Kool-Aid package. Water is obviously the solvent. The uh, Kool-Aid package is a solute. And the sugar is a solute. Those three things go together to make up the solution Kool-Aid. Now, Kool-Aid always has a color. It's green, it's purple, it's red, whatever, orange. These are all solutions because you can see through them all. You can't see the solute anywhere. It's gone. It's dissolved into the solution. Okay? And here are some properties of a solution. Particles are evenly distributed. In other words, they're homogeneous. Components do not chemically react with each other. So the components in a solution are simply dissolved into each other. They're not reacting. So this is not a chemical reaction. Aqueous and gaseous solutions of gases are transparent. Components do not separate on standing. That means if you leave a solution in a bottle on a shelf, it'll be there forever. It'll never fall, like the, the solute will never come out. Okay? The concentration of a solution can be changed. Simply add more solvent or add more solute, concentration changes. States of solutes and solvents. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures of gases or solids or liquids. Uh, liquids are the most common way to find solutions in my opinion. Air that you're breathing right now is a solution of gases. Nitrogen is the solvent. Oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide, water, these are solutes. Nitrogen is the most prevalent gas in the atmosphere. So it is going to be the solvent. Brass, the metal brass, is an example of a solid solution. The solute is zinc, and the solvent is copper. Copper is in brass in the most prevalent amount, so it's considered the solvent. Zinc is the solute. They dissolve into each other, and you make the metal brass. Okay? A solute and solvent can be any of the three states of matter. So you can have a solution of gas and water called carbonation, right? You guys have all seen that. You know that oxygen dissolves in water. That's what the fish breathe, right? So these things can all occur. Now, if something is dissolved in water, it is known as an aqueous solution. So coffee is an aqueous solution. Kool-Aid is an aqueous solution. Most of the things in our life are aqueous solutions because we can drink water and it's harmless. Well, we actually need it. It's not just harmless. It's, har it's helpful, right? Pretty cool, huh? Now, water is unique. 
And that water can dissolve a lot of different things. It's very good at dissolving things. And because of that, water is known as the univer uh, excuse me, universal solvent. That's just the nickname that water has received because it can d uh, dissolve pretty much anything. Okay. Now, water molecules form hydrogen bonds with neighboring water molecules, making it high boiling. It's a high boiling liquid. And you may not know this. Let me get my, my head out of the way here. Water, or ice, excuse me, floats on liquid water because ice is less dense than liquid water. So it'll float. Pretty cool, huh? That's why if you look, if you live in the north and you have live by a lake or whatever, you'll notice there's big old ice chunks floating on top of the water because ice is much less dense than water. That's why when icebergs come off of the Arctic and down into the uh, Atlantic, uh, they're floating. Because ice is less dense than water. Pretty neat, huh? Pretty pretty neat. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. All right. Now there's also these things called colloids and suspensions. Now, milk and cream are not transparent liquids, so they're not solutions. In order to be a solution, as a, an aqueous solution or a liquid solution, you have to be transparent. Cream, and here's, oops, sorry. Here's cream right here. You can see the stream of cream coming in here. It's white, non-transparent. So it's not a solution. Can't be. Solutions are transparent. This is a colloid. Colloid. Now, colloids are homogeneous, but they're not transparent. Okay? Cream, for example, is not transparent, but it is homogeneous. It's been homogenized. Okay? Homogenized means, homogenized means made homogeneous. Okay? Now... Colloids have particles that are quite large, and they're the fats, and, and to a lesser extent the sugars, but the fats inside of a milk and cream make it um, so that the particles don't, when they dissolve or when they, they uh, interact with the solvent, they are not transparent, but they still are homogeneous for the most part. So they're called colloids. Okay. Now, in a colloid, those particles will not separate over time. They'll, they'll stay in that state forever just like solutions. Now, suspensions, on the other hand, for example, if you want to think of a really cool suspension, think about those snow globes you buy at Disney or wherever you buy your fine snow globes. You have a snow globe, little Cinderella or whoever's inside the snow globe, and you shake it up, and then they watch the little pieces of plastic whip around Cinderella's head. That's a suspension because you have to shake it to keep those little plastic parts or particles suspended in the water. Okay, that's a suspension. Now, also, if you want to think of a different suspension, think about taking a glass of water down to the beach, take a teaspoon and dump in some uh, sand, and then stir. As long as you're stirring, those pieces of or those particles of sand will stay suspended or up in motion in the liquid. Excuse me. But as soon as you stop stirring, gravity will force those particles down to the bottom. That's a suspension. All right. Now, you've all seen medications that said shake well before use. Those are suspensions. All the medicine has probably sank to the bottom, and you got to shake it up so that you get a nice, when you pour the medication out into a teaspoon or whatever, you get the proper amount of medication. That's why they want you to shake it. A lot of times, that's why they want you to shake it. All right, and that brings us to the end of 8.1. So we'll pick it up again at 8.2. Now, with that, I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.